وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِشَاقَ بَلِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And just recall the time when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, the progeny of Israel, and that is Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. What was that covenant? This, this ayah is very important. It gives the gist of the deen of Allah that has been the same from the very beginning. What are the basic articles of the deen of Allah? Number one, la ta'buduna illa Allah. You will not worship anybody, anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bil walidain ihsana. Number two, you must be respectful to and good in behavior towards your parents. Number three, wa zil qurba wal yatama wal masakin. And you should be doing good to your relatives and the orphans and the poor. Number four, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا Say to the people, whatever is good. Talk to them gently. And join them towards whatever is good. And as the reverse of it, forbid them from whatever is wrong. From whatever is evil and bad. Number five, وَاقِيمُ السَّلَاةِ Establish this compulsory prayer five times a day. Baat is zakah and pay the obligatory charity. Pay the zakah regularly. Summa tawallatu. This was the covenant. This was the misaq. It misaq. This misaq was taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the former Muslim ummah. But now the charge is summa tawallatu illa qalila minkum. Then you turned your backs towards this Misaq, towards this covenant. Except a few among you. Only a few remained strict and true to this covenant. All of the rest abrogated. Bantu Moridun, while you were averse, you turned your backs and went away. Now another Misaq. This was the basic misaq, you know, and this I told you is the gist of the deen of Allah. These are the headings under which you can count all the teachings of the deen of Allah. And just recall when we took the covenant from you, you will not shed your blood. What does it mean? You will not shed the blood of each other because you are one ummah. Now a person, an individual belonging to the Ummah, if he kills a person belonging to the same Ummah, it is as if he has shed his own blood. He has killed himself. You will not shed the blood of each other. And you will not expel each other from their homes, fighting each other. Because you know after Hazrat Moses alayhi salatu was salam, when Bani Israel entered Palestine, they conquered it. But they didn't establish one central government. They divided the whole country into 12 small states. Each tribe had its own state. Small states. And then there was a quarrel. In, they were infighting. They were quarreling with each other. And then they were invoking and seeking the help of the others against each other. This is what happened in India before the Britishers came there. The whole of the country was divided into very small, you know, states and they were fighting each other and the Britishers took advantage of their enmities and that is how they could conquer this whole, this big subcontinent. A few thousand of them, they conquered the whole of the country because there was infighting. So that happened for about 300 years after Hazrat A. Musa alayhi salatu was salam. They were divided among themselves. They had small states. They were fighting each other. And when someone attacked the other state, they expelled people from their, from their state. So that they have been doing, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden them from doing so and taken the covenant. Then you promised that you will abide by this covenant and you are witnesses to it. 
that you promised, you ratified the treaty, you ratified the covenant. So, then it is you who have been killing each other. And expelling, turning out some of your people from their homes. And you have been having aggression on them and helping the enemies. It is helping each other against someone. With sin and aggression. There was another article of the covenant. That whenever you find a Jew with person of your own community as a captive anywhere, you must get him free by paying the ransom. This was again an article of the Sharia. Just as you know, it should be absolutely logical that we, if we find any Muslim in bondage and he is captive somewhere and we can afford to buy for him the freedom. To pay the money of ransom and get him free. We should do it as Muslims. So that was another article of the covenant that was taken from them. But now what happened? Now they were acting upon this article. When the same people whom they had themselves turned out from their homes. When they came to them as captives. Now they remembered the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh we had promised that whenever we shall find a Jew in bondage or as a captive we must get him free by paying the ransom said so they were paying the ransom and getting them free now this was their attitude although it was banned for you it was haram for you to expel them from their homes had you not expelled them from their homes they would not have become captives you expel them and here you contravene, contravene the covenant. But when they came as captives, now you are ransoming them. So actually what does it mean? You are acting upon a part of the deed, part of the covenant, and you are breaking the other part. Now this is actually, These words are most profound. They are applicable to each of us today. Each of us. Not a single Muslim I can find at least who is free from this attitude. So do you accept a part of our law, our book? And reject the other? What are we doing today? Are we acting upon the whole of the being? No, part of the deal. Pray to Allah, pay the zakah. But go in business with interest. It's all right. Do everything which is haram. We are doing it. Not a single country in the whole of the Muslim world, although the number of the countries might be exceeding 50 or 60. Any country where there is no interest, no riba, then the economy everywhere is based on riba. Any country where the deen of Allah is implemented in Toto, none. So what are we doing? And you here are faithful to the American constitution. What is that constitution? Is it Islamic? At least I in Pakistan have a solace that in Pakistan constitution we have that objective resolution which declares that sovereignty is for Allah and the Authority that we hold is a delegated authority only. At least this is there. Although these are words only. We are not practicing it. But you know at least the words are there. Just as we utter the Shahada, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha illallah, Ashadu Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We are not practicing according to the Shahada. But we are Muslims on the basis of this Shahada. But the whole of the rest of the Muslim world, nowhere. The constitution doesn't provide it. That we accept Allah as our sovereign. Sovereignty belongs to him. Sarvari zeba fakat us zate behamta kuhe. Ukmara ikmohi baki butani adri. Nowhere. 
so this is very important and you know the example is taken from the jews but the whole story is applicable to us khushtara bashat ke sirr dil bara gufta ayat dar hadith e deegra stories of the older umma but actually it's applicable fully to the to the present muslim umma afato manuna bi ba'd al kitab wa takfuruna bi ba's so do you accept and believe in part of the book part of the sharia and you reject and disbelieve the rest of it fama jaza wa yafalu zalika minkum so there can be no punishment for those who take to this attitude from amongst you illa khizyun fil hayat ad dunya except that they should be put to extreme humiliation in the world in this world in the life of this world and that is what we are experiencing extreme humiliation why hai aaj ke us zaleel ke kal tak na thi pasand gustaki ye farishta hamari janab mein why at least there is a cause and the cause is the same because we have accepted the faith islam deen only partially illa khizyun fi hayat ad dunya wa yawm al qiyamah yuraduna ila ashab al azab or on the day of judgment they will be thrown in the worst punishment in the most grievous torment wa ma allah bi ghafilin amma ta'malun and don't think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of what you are doing ulaika alladhina ashtarabud dala la ashtarabul hayat ad dunya bil akhirah they are the people who have purchased this this life of this world in exchange for the life of hereafter they have given away the life of hereafter and they have preferred and chosen the life of this this world fala yukhaffafu anhum al azab so the torment shall not be lightened or decreased for them wala hum yunsarun nor they will be able to get any help from anywhere 